More local news. A decision day is getting closer for city council members on the proposed agreement with the Jaguars that calls for spending hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars to renovate Everbank Stadium. Getting underway right now is the final huddle where people can learn more about the proposal and ask questions. The huddle began a few minutes ago at Westside High School. Accompanying the stadium makeover is a $300 million community benefits package divided between the Jaguars and the city for development in such areas as housing, homelessness, and parks. However, that proposal has been controversial, even though a recent UNF poll found broad public support for it. News for Jack's reporter Ann Maxwell spoke with one vocal critic of that possible outlay, Councilman Rory Diamond. And he told you the poll is not changing his mind. That's right, Tom. In that poll, 81% of people who participated said they support the proposed $300 million for community development. But Councilman Diamond says he thinks there's a better deal, one that the poll didn't ask about. Duval County taxpayers could be on the hook for $925 million as part of deals with the Jacksonville Jaguars, totaling $1.4 billion. $775 million of public funds would go toward the stadium of the future, and $150 million of public funds would be invested in the community. I met City Councilman Rory Diamond in his district at Jacksonville Beach to get his take. What are your thoughts on the Jag Stadium proposal? I mean, I think the City Council is going to get it in a couple of weeks. It's literally hundreds and hundreds of pages long, so I'm going to read the entire thing. Thing. I suspect that it will pass, but the big fight is going to be over the community benefits agreement. The community benefits agreement is part of the proposal. It's $300 million that would go toward community development on the east side, as well as parks, affordable housing, workforce development, and homelessness initiatives throughout the county. Taxpayers and the JAGs would split the cost 50-50. In a UNF poll released earlier this week, 81% of respondents said they support that community benefits agreement. And a majority of respondents only supported subsidizing the stadium when the three hundred million additional dollars go toward the community. That's Councilman Diamond has been critical of the community benefits agreement, tweeting, that's a non-starter and council will remove it. The UNF poll found that that was more popular than the funding for the stadium itself. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, the poll was total garbage because it didn't ask the honest questions. If I asked you, hey, I'll give you a hundred million dollars for free from the Jaguars or I'll give you $150 million, but you have to pay me $150 million, which would you choose? You take $100 million for free every time. So that wasn't the question they asked. Is that an option, just $100 million from the Jags free and clear? Yep. The Jags have said they will put in $100 million of community benefit for zero taxpayer dollar match. City Councilman Ron Salem said he's also heard that from several people. Next, City Council will review the deal in a series of meetings in June. The goal is a vote by the end of the month. West Coast faster. And just in the past hour and a half or so, a spokesperson for the mayor's office confirmed the Jags did initially offer $100 million for community development without any taxpayer match. She confirmed that the mayor negotiated that $300 million package after that, telling me the matching funds create enough investment to be truly impactful in addressing workforce development, parks, construct, parks construction along the Riverwalk, excuse me, creating more affordable housing and reducing homelessness, thus maximizing this moment for the city's future. That's because the city's portion will fund over the next few years, making an immediate impact while the JAGS por portion funds over decades to sustain those vital initiatives over the long term. Reporting live in Jacksonville and Maxwell Channel 4, The Local Station.